Look, there's certain Pokemon you see when you're playing through the DLC, and you think to yourself, that is gonna be a problem, and Crawdont is one of those dudes. So of course we're taking advantage of that thing today, and we got a really fun match here for you guys. If you're new here to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k subs, and it would really mean a lot if you could help out, but I do appreciate all the support. Let's get into the match. Alright, so my opponent is gonna lead off with a kitty that looks like it has a watermelon stuck in its face, and I decide to lead off with the Infernape. So, I was kind of expecting this lead. Now the reason for that is because this thing generally goes for a parting shot. I can then U-turn being slower and then grab uh, a matchup accordingly. So that is exactly what happens. This thing is gonna go for that parting shot and I can grab myself a little bit of momentum, see what they decide to go into and then, you know, choose a matchup accordingly. So uh, they're actually gonna end up going into a slow king. So we're actually both working with slow kings in this match. And I am a little bit afraid of this thing, but I do have a couple of answers to it. Now I could go Crawdont early um, and force it out with a knockoff, or I could instead bring in the Sinistra. This is the uh, new Sinistee that came out here, so I'm gonna bring out the old Anxiety and uh, see if I can get this bad boy going. Honestly, this seems like a super fun Pokemon, uh, and I've got a, a pretty a pretty sweet set here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for a Calm Mind. I know uh, that this thing could likely be carrying something like the Ice Beam or a Flamethrower. Uh, regardless, after I get a Calm Mind, I should be able to easily take that and then kind of just be you know, a problem in a cup for this dude. So that's exactly what I do. I go for that Calm Mind that's gonna give me a special attack boost along with a special defense boost. And this thing reveals that it actually has the Fire Blast. So uh, it does connect, it hurts a little bit, but honestly, after Leftover Recovery, I am looking nice. Uh, also, this thing's signature move, Matcha Gacha, actually uh, does heal you back as well. So this thing's max defensive with that Calm Mind. I am uh, kind of, Kind of an issue, honestly. I'm gonna go for that Matcha Gotcha. Now, the problem is, on their team, they do have switch ins to this, and that is gonna be mostly in the form of Muck. So he's actually gonna end up switching out, does go into that Muck, uh, but the reason why I figured it was worth going for that Calm Mind and trying to set up is because, you know, if this thing switches in and I get the burn with the Matcha Gotcha, I'm actually in a position where I can kind of 1v1 this thing. You notice I do have Strength Sap, so I can get all of my health back. Uh, just unfortunately, I'm not able to do, you know, a whole lot of damage to this thing because Fucking techno rave muck over here is extremely specially defensive, um, and it's you know it's not great for me. Plus, I don't really want to take a knockoff, and I'm thinking, okay, I didn't get the burn, so I probably shouldn't pick this fight. I, I could potentially come out on top, but I do have, I just have straight up Bruce in the back. Now, listen, Garchomp just dropped in usage to underused, which is actually insane. We are living in the weirdest timeline right now, so. You already know I'm using Garchomp and underused because this thing should not be underused, but uh, he's gonna go for the knockoff on the switch, does actually get the poison touch, and gets rid of my rocky helmet, and knocks me to half, and damn, like that shit hurted. So he does get hit by some rough skin plus the rocky helmet, so, you know, at least there's that. But Garchomp is, you know, looking pretty weakened at this point. Uh, I can force this thing out with an earthquake, but what I'm finding would be most important is probably setting up my stealth rock. So. He has some Pokemon that I would like to have the rocks up for. It's mainly like Armor Rouge or that thing's Focus Sash. Uh, it's just going to kind of limit some switches, so I, I'm going to go for the Stealth Rock here instead of the Earthquake, because I don't imagine this thing's going to stand anyway. It's a good answer to my uh, Sinistra, and he is going to switch that thing out. So, Muck gets put in the back pocket for later, and in comes Decidueye. So, uh, I set up the Stealth Rock in this thing's face. I know generally these things could be, you know, Defog. It probably is if you bring it in against the Garchomp here. Uh, but what I do know also is that I'm, you know, I'm faster. I can get some great chip on this thing uh, to the point where it's easy to pick off later. And, you know, Garchomp doesn't look super useful in this matchup. It's great against the Muck, but uh, I feel like I have, you know, good answers for that anyway. So I go for the Dragon Claw here. It does a round half as the thing goes for that Defog. So I put, I work hard to get my Stealth Rocks up and it just blows them right away. So no one appreciates the art of setting down a good pair of Stealth Rocks these days, I swear. But... Uh, you know, I've got this thing around half. You know, another attack is going to be a roll. I could potentially go for the Terra Dragon to guarantee uh, the Dragon Claw finishes it off. But what instead I'm going to do is go ahead and set right back up uh, the Stealth Rock. As I imagine, he's probably not going to stay in. He actually does end up switching, uh, and he's going to bring back in the uh, Alolan Persian. So, again, this thing got stung by a shit ton of bees or tried to swallow a watermelon. It's up to you. But uh, I do get that Stealth Rock back up, and now Armor Rouge is like, hey, now I can't switch into that shit, but... That's exactly what I needed. I could have gone for some good damage against the Persian, but you know, it's not really that big uh, of an issue at this point. So I'm just gonna stay in. There's really no reason keeping Garchomp around at this point. Uh, and he does finish me off with the foul play. So he does get some rough skin damage because I'm out here like sandpaper baby and down goes the chomp. So at least I was able to get up my stealth rock. I got some good chip on this Decidueye. 
Um, and I'm feeling like I'm in a pretty decent position because now I can bring in whatever I want against the Persian. So what that ends up being is going to be the Infernape once again. Now he knows that I've gone for the U-turn shenanigans on his parting shot before. Uh, and this time I'm just thinking, you know, I should probably just go uh, for an attack. I'm going to go for the overheat. Now listen, this is... Infernape is back, baby. So you already know Mixtape is back. And that is a, a mixed Infernape. And because my Mixtape is fire, uh, I go for the overheat. I'm also... Uh, carrying physical moves, but having the, the option for the overheat uh, is honestly super nice I, I kind of expected a potential switch, but he does just stay in and actually paralyzes me which is wildly unfortunate I'm not gonna lie the, the thunder wave there really kind of limits what Infernape's gonna be able to do with his skinny ass stick tail So um, now I'm gonna go for the u-turn. I'm thinking this thing definitely switches or goes for that parting shot uh, And then I can get a pivot kind of just like I did in the early game So he does switch this thing out. Unfortunately, you know the overheat wasn't enough to take it out had I gone for the close combat you know, it would have been some dead pussy, but it's fine. Uh, I did get the chip that I needed there as well to now put it in range for Aqua Jet to kill uh, with the Crawdon. So, I go for the U-turn. Luckily, don't get fully parried as he does bring in the Coma o Now, freaking Coma o is everywhere right now because it is so good right now. There's a couple different sets that this thing could be running, and honestly, it's a frightening little fella. So, uh, what I'm going to do is go into the... Slow King. Now, I have the Ice Beam for this thing. I know I can take an attack for sure. Uh, and I definitely just want to try to at least potentially scare this thing out. So, I do go for that Ice Beam here. And it turns out he's actually definitely going to want to conserve that Coma O because I think he's a massive threat at the back. And he decides to go into his own his own Slow King. So, we're just kind of just standing here like we're looking in a mirror with our arms behind our backs. Like, what's up, brother? But I go for that Ice Beam. Of course, it does negative damage to the thing. But it, what it does do is turns this thing into a Popsicle or a Pulsicle, per se. Um, and so that's not a super big deal as this is kind of a weird mirror match here as we both You know, we're both regenerators. So when we switch we do grab some health back and we can't really hurt each other that much either um, This thing does carry the fire blast, but he stays frozen here as I go for that future site um, And now I'm thinking, you know, I got you bro I'll throw some hot water on you and just just thaw you out. You hate to see your own family frozen right in front of you But he does actually thaw out goes for that future site. So, you know, a two-turn freeze or one turn freeze, not that bad. Uh, so now we both have future sites kind of kind of looming in the distance here. Um, and now I figure it's probably a good time for me to chilly reception the fuck on out of here. Uh, I don't really have, you know, a good matchup. Neither of us have a good matchup. It's just kind of like, who, who's going to make the move? And it turns out I am going to tell the chillingly bad joke. And we love this move because if you go second, it actually just gives you a free switch uh, into whatever you like while setting up the snow, which is no longer a big deal. You don't take... Uh, chip damage from it. It just boosts defense of, of ice types. So I go for that chilling reception because it's a great pivot. And what that does is allows me to bring in Mr. Craw. And Crawdaunt is looking great at this point. I can force this thing out with a knockoff. I could potentially set up swords dances. And I also don't get hit by their future sight. So mine does go into effect there against their slow king. As uh, when theirs hits next turn, it's not going to affect me because dark type. So I've got some meaty claws and some options here. Now I'm thinking I could go for the Swords Dance or I just go right for the knockoff. The reason why I just go straight for the knockoff instead of the setup is because he does have the Coma O in the back who uh, doesn't die obviously to an Aqua Jet and I'm not fast enough to be able to outspeed it. So I just go for the knockoff here as in comes the Alolan Muck. Now Alolan Muck again is the only issue for my Sinistra. So uh, seeing this thing whittled down to the point where I could take it on is actually pretty nice. So. That knockoff almost actually kills this thing, and the future side attack ain't gonna do shit, boy, because I am, in fact, the darkest crawfish you've ever seen. Shout out to Mr. Craw, shout out to Blunder. I am a female as, as a Mr. Craw, I had, listen, I had to be Mr. Craw, shout out to Blunder. The, that is the only name acceptable uh, for the Crawdon. So, I finished that thing off with an Aqua Jet, which is great. Alolan Muck is a good pivot for them, and now it's gone. So, I take a little bit of Life Orb recoil, and I am a little bit frightened by the fact that, you know, they can bring a matchup in here, and it turns out Decidueye has a good one because I can't really knock this thing out other than with a knockoff, and I really don't want to take a Leaf Blade to the face here. So, I do want to conserve the Crawdon. This thing's endgame here is looking amazing with that uh, adaptability Aqua Jet priority. This thing is absolutely insane. Plus, with the Life Orb, goes crazy. So, I am going to switch here. I'm going to end up bringing in the Yan Mega, thinking I can come in on a, I can come in on a Leaf Blade all day, but it actually ends up going for the Defog there. So, Really wants to prioritize getting those stealth rocks away. And I figured that's probably because of the armor rouge. That thing has to have a focus sash, and uh, it definitely doesn't want to switch into that. So at least now I get a, a good matchup here uh, with the Yan Mega. I'm actually going to end up going for the Psychic. Now the reason for that is because I expected Coma O as a potential switch in, uh, but he actually just ends up staying in with the Decidueye, and the Psychic is not going to do enough to knock it out. So that is unfortunate. You sometimes. 
Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. It would have been amazing had Koma O come in there, but uh, he just gets that U-turn. Uh, and now decides to bring in the Armor Rouge. Finally, we get to see the wackest shiny of all time. Game Freak has truly dropped the ball on being able to give this thing a sick-ass shiny. But uh, I'm thinking they're going to expect me to switch. I have a Slow King directly in the back, and I'm thinking I need to go for the Psychic to break this thing's focus sash. So it's kind of my main uh, priority at this point, is, is break that sash. I go for that Psychic and actually get the critical hit, which is amazing, as he didn't go for the fire move, likely expecting the Slow King. So... Now I'm like, whatever, I'm actually just going to go into Slow King at this point, I might as well, because uh, Smart Paul has got his Regenerator, we're at full, and just out here having a time. And I know that this Dark Pulse uh, shouldn't be a 2 at KO, as it's honestly really close. Uh, but after Leftovers, I am looking pretty safe here, and this Armor Rouge is now to the point where Aqua Jet from Crawdont does put the pressure on it. So, I'm going to go for the Scald here, as they actually do end up switching. And I'm thinking, hey, Scald's always a good option. Listen, you can... You can basically count on the fact that I love to roll the dice on hard switches into a Scald potential burn. So I do go for that Scald. Decidueye comes in. I'm thinking, please burn it. And it doesn't. Scald, you're not doing what you're fucking supposed to. And uh, that really sucks because now this uh, Decidueye is going to be able to live. And also scare me out with uh, either of its stabs. So uh, I don't really have a great switch into this thing. So what I decided to do is just go for the Ice Beam. I'm thinking I could at least take an attack, kill it with an Ice Beam. Uh, but it doesn't happen. It ends up going for the Roost, and at this point we have the battle quite sped up. Now the reason for that is because uh, I don't really think I need Slow King that much in the rest of this matchup, so I'm just going to try to get this thing down as low as possible, uh, and then my Revenge Switch just does great here. Um, so that's exactly what happens. It goes for one more Giga Drain, and uh, it's just at too much health. My Ice Beam is not quite enough to take care of the damn Decidueye. Um, so left this fucker back in Gen 7 where it came from, but... Truly, all I really need on this thing is just enough chip to where I can take it out later. So it actually ends up finishing me off with the U-turn here, uh, and they have an empty battlefield to switch into whatever they like. Now it turns out they're actually going to end up going into the coma o and this thing is, again, just looking at about as scary as ever. Um, so what I decide to do is I'm actually going to go into Yan Mega. I can force this thing, or at least scare it with a Psychic, and I'm thinking, okay, the, there's three minutes left on the battle timer, so i got to start making some moves here. I'm actually going to end up going for the Bug Buzz. Now here's why we do that. I do expect them to potentially switch back into that Alolan Persian. I am choice specs and locked into Psychic if I had gone for it. I end up going for the Bug Buzz and it actually ends up knocking out the Koma O with a critical hit, which is actually insane. Yan Mega is extremely clutch. Um, and I really just, I really went for that because I knew even if he didn't switch, it would have put that thing in easily chip range, but uh, it ends up working out for your boy and we will take it. So now they decide to go into the Armor Rouge. Now this thing is going to be able to outspeed and kill me, but the Crawdont has been completely set up to basically sweep the rest of the match. So, they're actually going to go for the Terra Fire, uh, which actually doesn't really change anything, and all it does is takes up, like, goddamn a minute and a half of our two minutes left in the battle. So, it puts the candles on his head, finishes me off with that Armor Cannon. And uh, it doesn't really matter, because I broke this thing's Focus Ash, Crawdont can come in and finish it off with that Aqua Jet. So, Megatron goes down, but did exactly what we needed it to do. And that is look badass, not be dragon type because Game Freak sucks, and, you know, finish off the coma. So, uh, you love to see it. So now, it's basically end game time that we've set ourselves up for with the Crawdont, and Aqua Jet is absolutely insane with that adaptability. So, uh, we've got a minute left, and Crawdont basically just gets to finish off his whole team. So I go for the Aqua Jet here. Of course, without any priority or anything, this, you know, candle-headed Armor Rouge cannot really do much. Um and the battle is just kind of slowly ticking down at this point. As they have four Pokemon left, Aqua Jet is going to finish off the Armor Rouge. Now they have the Alolan Persian who dies to an Aqua Jet, they have the Slow King that dies to a knockoff, and then they have Decidueye who also dies to the knockoff. So down goes the Armor Rouge, and we have 30 seconds until the battle ends, as I have three Pokemon left, and they do as well. Uh, we do take a little bit of Life Orb Recoil, which is completely fine. I'm over here with my Meaty Claws, just having myself a time. As in comes the Decidueye, again we've got the amount of chip we needed, and an Aqua Jet easily finishes my dude off. Crawfish is an absolute goat if you can set yourself up, uh, basically as a win condition, so. Game Freak truly needs to give us the 60 minute battle timer. 20 minutes is going to come up here, uh, but Crawfish does kind of seal the deal as it's able to sweep the rest of the team. So, you know, in comes ye old Persian who, you know, just dies to an Aqua Jet, but it's not going to get the satisfaction of that because the timer is over. Please post in the comments, at Game Freak, fix the timer. We <laughs> really need it. Um, but it's still going to result in a win because I do have more Pokemon at this point. And also Crawfish, you know, is is actually the GOAT. So 
Thank you guys very much for watching. Um, it was a fun match. I'm having fun with this team. And let me know what you guys thought. I will see you next time. Peace out.